Today marks a special day for the city of Mumbai, whose tryst with the double-decker bus dates back to 1937. And today is remarkable because behind me is the first double-decker electric bus that the city is going to be seeing. It's the Switch EIV22 and uh, there are 200 of these that are going to be plying the streets of Mumbai. Switch, of course, is an electric subsidiary of Ashok Leland. Ashok Leland being the brand that has been supplying double-deckers to this city since 1967. So it knows a thing or two about uh, Mumbai's terrain and the kind of requirements for an electric bus, let alone a double-decker. Um, you know, so in terms of taking that kind of abuse, uh, taking on those weather extremities. Uh, hopefully, what you're looking at here is the face of the immediate future. Right, so I'm on the bottom deck of the bus and for very good reasons, uh, I'm not allowed to drive it. So what I can do is I can take this time to tell you what this bus is all about. Uh, to begin with, there is a 231 kilowatt hour um, battery underneath and the range, the claimed range under ideal conditions is about 250 kilometers. Now, of course, this can vary considerably based on the kind of load it's carrying, um, the air conditioning and of course the, you know, ambient temperatures outside. I'm not really sure about top speed, but this does get about three to four thousand charging cycles which means that it's good for the single battery is good for about 12 years now of course public transport buses are used to running for considerably longer periods than that uh, and there are plenty of examples of those on the road but what switch says is that they're not going to wait for 12 years um, you know to to see what kind of changes need to be made to the battery uh, to replace the entire battery pack the entire pack is is good for 12 years but it is modular and uh, should new technology come in, uh, should more sustainable um, and long-lasting battery packs uh, come in, then they are going to, you know, change sections of, of, of the battery. Here's hoping that uh, it brings about a much larger uh, use of public transport system, especially the local buses than we see currently. So as you can see, we're in the upper deck of the bus and uh, the maximum capacity from bottom floor and the top deck is about 66 people. Of course, that can vary because there's large uh, standing areas at the bottom. But up here, apart from what you see with the seats, you know, there's really not more people that can be accommodated. Uh, there is, of course, the standard stuff that you find in international buses, and including the ones in London. Uh, you have a CCTV camera there for safety purposes. Uh, you have an, a board here which will display uh, your station and everything and of course there's a speaker system which will announce all of that for you. Um, the main factor here is that this bus has been built keeping in Mumbai's conditions in mind. Um, so firstly, you know, what you have is a well cushioned, nicely contoured seat which is very comfortable. Uh, and it's not just that, I can't tell you how this bus feels to ride or drive it in a closed space but having relied upon uh, London's electric uh, buses, a lot of the double-decker buses are now electrified, I can tell you that it's a significantly easier experience, not just for the driver, but also for the, uh, the passenger because of the way it takes off, the refinement in the powertrain, um, the way, uh, you know, just how quiet and silent it is, it does make for a tangibly better riding experience. And uh, because of that, we're really hoping that we see a higher level of adoption um, of public transport uh, in Mumbai. This, the first model is just designed for Kolaba and Kurla routes, uh, but the ones that are going to be uh, coming in the future, of course, will be going all over the city. And let's not forget, it's been designed keeping in mind Mumbai's conditions. So uh, the heavy monsoons, the pothole roads, the, uh, the sheer crowd that it can accommodate, uh, you know, the battery packs, I've been designed keeping that in mind and one of the most important features is that switch mobility has ensured that there is a remote monitoring system uh, which allows the company to monitor the battery's thermals remotely so in case the temperatures rise from green to yellow to red uh, they can remotely intervene call the driver and just see what take stock of what needs to be done immediately to cool down the temperatures in the very very unlikely event of a thermal runaway 
Um, so really, a lot of factors have been kept in mind, uh, you know, just given what this bus will have to go through. Um, but it is the first of many such electric buses that we're going to see that are hopefully going to really revolutionize uh, the public transport system. Joining us today is one of the foremost voices uh, on electric mobility in the country, the former MD of Mahindra Electric and the CEO of Switch Mobility, the man of the hour, Mr. Mahesh Babu. Mahesh, thank you so much for joining us. Most welcome. Uh, first question is, Mahesh, you know, there's a difference between what a double-decker bus in London goes through and what a double-decker bus in Mumbai goes through in terms of its load-bearing capacity, the temperature, everything. So how has this been engineered to, you know, take on the daily abuse um, that a public transport bus has to go through? See, um, it's a very good question. Actually, one year back when our engineers started looking at how to get back the double-decker into the country, we looked at two portions of it. One is Ashok Leyland have been a pioneers in double-decker in Mumbai. And we have been delivering between 1960s and 1980s the double-decker of the Mumbai, which right. is the iconic uh, memories which we all had. And in 2014 onwards, we have a double-decker uh, electric in uh, London. So London is very unique and uh, very synonymous of uh, uh, what I would say public transportation, particularly bus. About 9% of the people in uh, London travel in uh, buses, public transport, road transport. Uh, whereas in, in uh, Mumbai and India, we look at about 1%, which is very difficult uh, uh, to manage the cities. Uh, so what we did is we looked at the learnings in Ashok Leyland, learnings in Switch UK and then we derived a bus uh, which has to meet the Indian condition but give the comfort of a global traveller. So uh, first is we decided the floor has to be on a semi-low floor to take care of the Mumbai rains and the water clogging and all that so the bus is uh, 900 mm fluoride. Uh, then we brought in the air condition because the big challenge is to have an air conditioning which is for both the deckers. So we'll have to put a powerful double decker, uh, powerful compressor to get the air conditioning comfortable for these two buses. Then um, the Indian double decker had one rear door. Actually, the front guy has to take a longer travel. So we said, no, we, we will have to bring the learnings from London. We need two steps without compromising on the number of seats. So we had two steps, one in the front, one in the rear, and then we still maintained 66 seats in the bus. Very, lot of work have gone in. Luckily, we had the uh, EV platform of architecture 650 volts ready from the EV12 bus. Uh, so we have used that and then created a, a platform uh, to meet all the requirements. So I'm very, very proud to say our engineers have worked very hard to get this configuration right, which delighted uh, most of us in the launch as well as in the customers. Uh, now, of course, BEST's mandate is to electrify 50% of its public transport by 2023. And uh, Switch Mobility has supplied or agreed to supply 200 of these double-decker buses to the city. So what is the rollout plan? How soon can we see those 200 uh, running on the roads? And uh, how far ahead, uh, you know, do you think Switch Mobility will join uh, BEST to meet this mandate? I have to give the credit to them because they are experimenting on many things, and which is favorable to the city, which is cleaner, safer travel to the city. So as part of that, we are planning to deliver the 200 double-decker buses. On part of electrification, BEST is 4,000 plus electric buses now. They are aiming to get 8,000 to 12,000 buses on the road. Uh, because they want to decongest the city, bring more uh, uh, car consumers and other consumers into the bus transport, which Switch and Ashok Leyland is completely prepared to do that in a very sustainable way. These double-deckers, uh, we will start supplying from uh, 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 December and uh, we are planning to complete before next June. Um now, of course, you know, electrification is a very important thing across the country and a lot of state governments are giving this uh, uh, their due importance. Other than BEST, what other municipal bodies and state governments uh, do you think, Bangalore being a key city where Switch is operating and supplying over 300 buses at the moment, uh, where else have you seen a lot of encouragement uh, in terms of electrification of state transport? I would give credit to both central and state governments of yeah. most of the uh, city, uh, most of the states. 
I think uh, even if you look at uh, double decker order or uh, Bangalore order or any order which you are taking, there is a central government frame to subsidy. There is also a state government on top of its subsidy that makes operational cost very less. See, anything less than let's say 50 rupees per kilometer will be very easily manageable by the STUs because STUs collect close to 40 to 50 rupees per kilometer on a regular bus. And what happens is uh, uh, that uh, on operationally they will be able to pay us uh, as long as the initial subsidy is done. So it's very, very economically viable for STUs to do that. I would say most of the states, uh, Bangalore, Ahmedabad, Delhi, Mumbai, and uh, many states, including UP, every state is uh, eager in bringing back uh, uh, electric mobility, public, particularly uh, public transportation, because uh, it helps them to even uh, economically make themselves better, clean the cities. Uh, consumers are very comfortable driving on an electric bus. Even drivers or partners like us who are driving the bus feel it very comfortable because it's a direct drive. The fatigue of the driver comes down substantially. I would challenge maybe through your channel, if any woman driver want to drive a double-decker bus first, we would train them, give them opportunity to drive, to drive it. I also want to know in terms of, you know, carbon dioxide, if you could give us some numbers as to just what sort of reduction a single double-decker double bus can bring about. So, uh, um, as per our calculation, about 70 tons of CO2 will be the offset for a single double-decker. Uh, actually, if you look at 200 double-deckers which we are running in Mumbai, it's like planting every year 86,000 trees in Mumbai, so which is substantial benefit to the city. So, each city, if it has about, let's say, 100 double-deckers, it's like planting 40,000 to 45,000 trees every year. Uh, so, the double-decker and single-decker, I think it's important you have to understand how double-decker is synonymous and important for urban cities in India, because the footprint is lower. You can carry in the same footprint about 86% more passengers just by increasing 18% weight of the bus because we have aluminium composite body and then this makes really lightweight and this helps uh, to reduce the footprint. We reduce about 40% footprint per passenger on a public transport when compared to a single decker to a double decker. Uh, now, of course, you know, safety is a major concern and you've talked about how the battery pack has been engineered specifically for Indian conditions in-house by, uh, by Switch Mobility. I want to know from a consumer point of view, you know, uh, what sort of measures have been taken? You've also mentioned that the battery thermals are being remotely monitored by Switch. Um, so just to allay those fears that consumers might have, especially when, you know, buses, are, buses tend to be overloaded in the country, uh, what kind of safeguards are we looking at? See, firstly, overloading uh, will only reduce the range and yeah. it, uh, uh, according to me, may, not, may or may not lead to any safety challenges. The safety okay. will primarily come from the temperature, yeah. uh, any water entries uh, uh, or any malfunction. And also prolonged running. These prolonged are running, running for, for over a period of time. Yeah. So, we monitor all the cells, temperatures, their performance remotely through our switch ion platform, uh, which we have a connected mobility solution. So as part of switch, uh, we will monitor the temperatures and if, for example, any battery particular module temperature goes up, then we can remotely actually reduce the uh, speed of the bus, reduce the indicate to drivers uh, uh, and look at whether it has been due to aggressive driving or is it due to temperatures and we can actually intervene. So that is the first level of intervention we can do to avoid reaching any safety issue. The second level is these algorithms which we are running on a particular speed, the uh, cooling system is controlled by us and that cooling system can be made effective. If there is any uh, defect, we can actually park the vehicle on the side, attend to it if there is an issue. The third one is we have a uh, fire detection alarm system and in some cases fire de detection suppression system. So if there is any uh, temperature raise, then alarm will come, passengers can walk down and in some cases it even purges if there is any safety issue and inert gas into the battery pack which will not percolate uh, any uh, uh, fire which uh, which uh, uh, starts from there to other bus parts. So we have multiple system at four level of safety and we do a lot of validation and testing to ensure that we don't have or we would not like to have any safety issue with our customers. By your estimate, uh, what level of electrification around you know public transport in metropolitan cities do you see in the next five years? 
So if you ask me, uh, let's say public transport like buses are about 9% now. Uh, Government of India is doing substantial work. CSL have taken an order aggregating across multiple platforms. I believe in next five years is very, very critical uh, for us to transform. And uh, the subsidy is not going to continue and the financing of these large assets like uh, single-decker buses and uh, double-decker buses needs to be addressed. So if we address all the issue of uh, financing, I believe the adoption will be much higher than 30-40%. If you are not able to solve the financing, at least it would be in the range of 20% plus.